From the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest striving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, The Vision, Bill Fisher, their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicky Fisher, and our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered, soon-to-be millionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with us, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes and Training Team. Welcome to the Garage Heroes and Training Podcast. I'm going to be your host for this episode, and my name is Bill. Whose cats am I hosting, hurting, whatever? <laughs> I'm Vicky. <laughs> I'm Jennifer. You are, and you are. You guys. Elizabeth. I know. <laughs> Elizabeth have... Jolly is here. We Yay! Do. That's right. We have a guest, Elizabeth Jolly. Yay! She was someone we met at our first ever, our second ever uh, race at Thompson, Connecticut with Lemons. It was Jennifer's yeah. first ever race, which is kind of cool. And then we listened to her on uh, the uh, Shifting Points Shifting. podcast. And then we met her at our last event at Lime Rock Park, where we did the autocross and the skid pad. And little did we know that all three of those people were actually just one people. And <laughs> it's Elizabeth Jolly. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. It was so great meeting you uh, at Lime Rock. I was so excited. That's it right. was so much fun. <laughs> it was fun. That's like $20 was- well spent on my part for you to get you to say that. So... Anyway, so yeah, Elizabeth, you uh, you race 944s for unknown reason. Actually, you work on 944s. You now have a E30 race car. You also have lots and lots of lots of other cars. Let's pretend, for those of us who aren't familiar with you, can you give a little bit of background about you and your cars and your racing and whatever? I um, have always liked cars growing up and um, read road and track with my father all growing up and I, I rode horses. So horses were my thing. And in 2000, and I bought a Boxster from a friend, a 99 Boxster in like 2013, had that for a while. And it was so much fun. I had no idea about amateur motorsports at all, none. And I um, sold that. And then in 2016, I, um, I bought a, I bought a, a 2014 Boxster and it was great. And I bought it specifically to do autocross. And I, somebody had pointed me to SCCA and said, Hey, there's amateur motorsports and there's this thing called autocross. And I thought it sounded like fun. So I showed up at my first autocross with um, Connecticut, uh, the Connecticut Porsche club. And I kind of just showed up and, and that was it. I loved it. It was great. And then I showed up up at, um, it, there's a place in in called Devons. It's the airfield that everybody runs at up in Massachusetts. And I showed up there for a Porsche Club race, uh, autocross, and just met a ton of people. And it just it was really great. I I ended up doing a track day the same year that season, and I did a track day, and I fell in love. I bought a 944 two weeks later, and. Um, you know, it ended up sitting because we couldn't get it started. But it was really and that that 944 ended up being our lemons car, because I figured I wanted to race. I just like that feeling of being beating somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody's competitive. <laughs> I'm not good. I mean, autocross, I was okay. I just I started not liking it because I wasn't getting better. And it, it, for various reasons, a lot of it, I had no focus. And I didn't feel comfortable in the car. For me, it really is important to feel com- to have a good seating position. And I couldn't find it. And I ended up selling my Boxster, not for that reason, but I sold that and was driving um, friends' cars, which was fine. I just wanted my own car. And I love track so much. In 2017, I must have done 20 track days. And in a car I was comfortable with, but it wasn't a race car. And now I look back and I'm like, oh my goodness, why would somebody drive like that crazy in a, in a street car? <laughs> like, it makes me, now I'm scared. Like, I don't know if I drive on track with a street car. 
Yeah, we understand. Yeah. So we did the lemons race. We that was our first one at Thompson. It was pouring rain. And I look at my videos now and and um Jen, I think you were talking about it on your podcast. I look at the videos and I'm her, I'm a terrible driver, like looking looking at those videos, but it was pouring rain and that was my first wheel to wheel experience. And I couldn't, and uh, the wiper broke, the driver's, the passenger side wiper broke mm -hmm. about two laps into my first session. And then it fogged up and I could not see. You oh, see the that video. that was the I year. Yeah, yeah. I distinctly remember that. It that was, was a horrible racing year. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> that at Thompson. But I, I don't know, knowing what I know now, I don't even know that I get in the car now if it was like that. <laughs> <laughs> at least back then I was stupid and just got yeah. in. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was driving around Thompson in a race wheel to wheel with other people that don't, you know, we're all like beginners at line at uh, lemons. And I was wiping with my hand, the, the uh, windshield. So I could try to see the other wipers not working. So the rain is just pouring and then there's water inside because it, for whatever reason, and it was sloshing back and forth. So you see the video and there's water. It's like a wave effect. The water's sloshing. I'm wiping the window. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> I can't, I don't, I would have pulled in. Like if it was now, I wouldn't have went out. Or I probably <laughs> would have, but I would have went out, but. At oh, the, it was crazy. At the end of the lemons video for Thompson 2018, was that 18? Yeah, I think that was, 18? yeah, that was 18. So yeah. that at the end of the lemons video, there's this picture of the guy driving up saying he can't see. Right into the trash can. And then, <laughs> and then he stops, says he can't see. And then he starts, I'm, I'm walking out to go help him so he can see. And then he just starts driving. I'm like, you said you can't see. Why are you starting the car and moving now? But you know. oh, that that story went through the paddock because we heard that story. It's like, and, what are you, what are you yeah. doing? And then you it drove was, into the trash can. It was great, though. I mean, I love the camaraderie of being on a team, and it was just really fun. We had issues with my seating position because the three um, gentlemen in in our team, Team Regressive, um, are over six feet tall, and I'm not. So it was know. tough with that. <laughs> and I look at the pictures now and I was sitting so low and you see a picture of me and it's the steering wheel and then these sunglasses. Like I look like a minion. And try to, <laughs> I couldn't see. And I, at one point I put a bunch of pillows down to see if I could, but unfortunately the pillows brought me over the, um, the seat. So we yeah. couldn't do that. But it was so eye-opening to see what they see I was like, this is where you guys sit. Like, you can see this. Like, no wonder you're driving better than I am. You can actually see. There's other cars <laughs> and everything. I think the Mustang was the same way. We well, had the same issue. We're, we're, we're working on our seating and our seating philosophy and our seating setup. So we've, we've got some help since then. We've learned a lot since then. And we're hoping to get our cars a little better. What's our philosophy just... in seating? <laughs> Don't settle for halfway. Or so we're going to maybe be... everybody can see. No, no. <laughs> let's not get carried away now. It is amazing what you can. I mean, how better, how much better you drive if you can see. <laughs> no, there, there's, there's these coaches and teachers and instructors that keep talking about vision's important. I, I don't, I don't think they take into account that sometimes if you're sitting in the wrong spot, you don't see anything. <laughs> You know. Well, somebody hit me at Lemons, and um, I didn't even see him coming, and we didn't get black flagged, so I just kept going. He kept going, and it, it was fine. I really, in the video, when you see him hit me, I make no, I, I don't even react. I just keep driving. Well, <laughs> it was very funny. Well, uh, you know. I, I can't say we don't have somebody on our team who does that too, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so Elizabeth, what is your profession outside of racing? I'm an attorney and uh, I just started my firm in February. I, I left the fir firm. I've been doing this 20 years. I'm a real estate attorney and okay. uh, I went on my own in February. So I'm really busy, which is great. Congratulations. Really yeah. Thank you. I should have done it a long time ago. <laughs> 
should we all uh, say? <laughs> I know. Yeah, the I know. housing market's hot. Yeah, it's, it's a great time for me to do this. It's very busy. So it's good. Yeah, that's what I did. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. Um, what is your racing experience and or training, um, high performance driving, racing history in and outside endurance racing, et cetera. And do you have any education, if any, in HPDEs or carts or anything? Well, I did the auto, I did autocross in the first, the second year I actually went to, I didn't do nationals, but we did some regional, went up to Michigan for, um, a, a pro solo. I actually did three pro solos. And that was fun. I was last um, in my, I came in last in all three events. It was my first, really my first year doing autocross, but met so many people and it was so much fun. And then I started doing track days and with a, with a Porsche club, um, I did about, about 20. That's one season. And when I, and I did two lemons races and that was great. Um, I progressed through the, the uh, Porsche club. Uh, they, they start with yellow or green, yellow, um, blue, white, and then black is advanced. And I got to, I'm in, I'm in blue right now, which is a solo driver. And I kind of flirted with white. I could have went into white, but it depends on the car I was driving. So I was driving a spec Boxster, which I really loved and helped build. So I had a connection with that car. And so when I drove that car with a coach, um, I, I was with the white group and I really felt comfortable. Um, now I drove the 944. Um, I don't know if you know SCCA, but mm -hmm. SCCA has what's called a CRE, a club racing experience. And I drove my 944 in that. And it, what it does is it, it gives you a kind of a, a pathway to get your license, your novice license. And it's a CRE. What it, what it is is an HPDE with a pa open passing. And they do, fall, they do false starts or they do um, race starts. And it was really, really fun. But I blew my engine. I just bought the 944 in December, took it to one of these in like March. And first time around, we do yellow, couple of laps yellow, follow the leader. And then the first green, we race and I blew the engine coming around on the straight. So that was kind of it for the 944. That was my experience with this, you know, race ready 944. And right. I wasn't happy, but and then I started driving the spec Boxster and it was so much fun. I haven't done really anything. I did one one event with um, Track Night in America last season to kind of shake down the 944 because I'd put another engine in it. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So hmm. now then I bought the E30. So now that you have uh, the E30 and um, have decided that, hey, this is going to be your hobby, what is your goals that you would like to achieve? I would like to get my, my competition license. My, I know I can get my novice license probably this season, but get my competition license. I would really like to do AER and do some endurance racing. I really like the team aspect of it and maybe an all girls team would be great. Um, just a lot hmm. of fun. An all <laughs> girls team, an all girls, like an endurance racing team. Yeah, an endurance with, racing team. With girls. With girls. <laughs> huh. Well, there's two of them here. Well, total of three. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I think there's three. I think it'd probably be a little easier with four. With four, yeah. I think that might be easier. Hmm. Got to hunt down a fourth. I think I think uh, I think the hunting's already been done. By the way, Miss Vicky. Well, okay. Yes, I'm gonna bring my palm fronds and my umbrellas and my really <laughs> overly tight clothes and be the sous chef for the weekend. <laughs> nice. It'll be fun. I just think it. I think it would be nice to just have an all girls team. I, I just think I, the camaraderie will be nice, mm -hmm. and being on the track, I, I just think it's a little bit different for women and not physically because we can drive just like men can, but I think mentally it's different for women than it is for men. And I'm sure people will argue with that and 
write in that, you know, other women will say, no, there's no difference. But I think it is, I think how we process information is different than men. And I, I see that in HPD. I said, saw that with the Porsche club. Um, yeah. The instructors treat you a little different and I hopefully nobody comes back and yells at me for that. Um, I've had a wonderful instructors, but what they tell me and what they were telling the, the, the guys that I'm friends with um, it was a little different and it was, you know, a little in, kind of eye opening for me that it would be a little bit different. Um, but I just think being in an all girls team would be fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When could we do an all girls team? (laughs) This season, maybe this season, (laughs) perhaps coming to a track near you. Yes, you will get the cover. No, I, I really liked lemons. I didn't think, I mean, a lot of people are like, it's dangerous and people are yahoos. And there were some, I just didn't, I didn't think it was as dangerous as people think. Um, it, what, what is your thoughts on lemons versus have you done a champ? And uh, or- we've, we've got a champ car scheduled for this year. We've done lucky dog. Um, we've done a lot of HPDs with all kinds of different groups and all kinds of things. I, I think the a lot of the lemons impression is a combination of maybe the way things were or yeah. what people have heard. And it's not, I mean, the, the people are definitely there to have a good time. And, and but when they're driving, they're driving and they're, and they're pretty serious. You know, when you've got a hundred and 40 cars on the track there's going to be a couple that you're like okay well we'll just let yeah. you have some space but you know that's that's going to be the case when you have 140 people i mean 140 cars times four drivers that's you know 600 people um yeah. you know they could be there so i don't think it's as bad as everybody says no. and then the, the car safety is phenomenal as far as tech inspection and everything so um, i don't think that's an issue i think vicky just locked up She doesn't know she locked up. Oh, I can no. hear you. So go. <laughs> oh, I'm there. Sorry. I okay. think I locked up. Bill yes. Locked up. Bill locked up. We were fine. <laughs> everybody everybody we else was fine. locked up. I, I was yeah. fine. We're fine. <laughs> no, what I what I do notice about lemons is that they are extremely strict with their safety tech. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they will crawl all over your car. They will check every seam on your welds. They will, you know, make sure that all your batteries are properly installed. They, I mean, they crawl all over it, which I have gone to other circuits or a other circuit, and they didn't do that. They are assuming that your car is set up properly. Well, you're talking yeah. more about the HPDs, some of the HPDs. No, I'm not. I'm talking about racing. Okay. So um, the other thing is lemons takes uh, black flags very seriously, yellow flags yes. very seriously. And if you put one tire off, like one inch off, mm-hmm. you will 90% of the time get a black flag. And, and if you're yeah. driving, that is not okay. They will pull you and black flag you. Yeah. So they do keep a, a pretty good control of it. It's It's not... I've never felt unsafe. No. Oh, I, I was surprised. I mean, I think Jay and um, Nick, they run a great event. They do. I mean, it was flawless for the amount of people and mm-hmm. the costumes and all of that. I mean, it looks crazier than it actually is. But I just, they run a really great event. And I was impressed. I was really impressed. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I think you have some, you know, certainly there's a lot of people that might be their first time or not inexperienced drivers, but I mean, we've talked about it in other podcasts. Like I would never be the first one out. <laughs> Do you know what right. I mean? Because, yeah. <laughs> because you kind of have to have somebody that, you know, has a little bit more experience or they can tolerate that. I mean, eventually as the day goes on, you know, cars break down or, you know, they, they, you know, get hit, they have to come out or whatever, but run out of testosterone. Um, you know, yeah. thinning the herd by noon is is kind of the goal mm-hmm. <laughs> before I get in the car. <laughs> but yeah. Um, our, yeah, our first race at Thompson, we go to start up. The car was starting perfectly. You turn it on, it started, went to our, um, the gentleman who was going out first, started it up, and it wouldn't start. 
And it took two hours of running around, finding some hose, you know, duct tape and all of that stuff. So we lost two hours and we were frantic. And then Mm -hmm. it was pouring out. But we really and then the car burned so much oil that we had to come in at Mm -hmm. certain intervals. A lot of I think every every hour we had to come in and put a cord in. Wow. So we were going through oil quite a bit, but she made it. I mean, three days of racing. Yeah. And then we, when we were at New Hampshire, the same thing. So we had our little oil, gas, and then the next stop is just gas. And then the next stop is oil and gas. So it was like our little routine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've, we've driven a couple of cars like that, but you know, yeah. not on purpose. Um, okay, sorry. Now that I'm unfrozen. So let me ask you, Elizabeth, and this, this is, is off topic a little bit. The, the people that you raced with at Thompson in New Hampshire that, that year, like who, who were they or how did you meet them? Well, they, I met them through um, the Porsche Club, autocrossing. Oh, okay. And uh, Jeremy, Chris, and Ollie were, are their names. And they, they do autocrossing. All, auto, um, Ollie now races his spec boxer with Porsche and SCCA. Um, Jeremy now bought a race car and he also has a Porsche R, um, Porsche Boxster R that he auto crosses. He's been doing it a long time. So has Ollie. Um, Chris is relatively new and has a Boxster as well. So um, Chris, Jeremy and I are, are pretty much in the same group with the Porsche doing the track days. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're a lot of fun chasing around the track. I mean, in, in the wet weather, I was I was faster than they were. And I think that was just out of stupidity because I just, (laughs) there is that, (laughs) there is that I just, I didn't, it's a real thing. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was just, I had no clue. And so I was faster coming on the straight at New Hampshire and I just didn't even think about it that it's raining and the tires are going to be different. So I happened to pass them. It was, it was, yeah, I don't know if that would happen now, but. It was fun. <laughs> so um, what is your uh, upcoming race schedule look like for 2021? Um, there's, I have a lot on the schedule, but nothing's, nothing's really confirmed. A lot of it depends on my, my work, you know, right. how busy I am. Cause it's just me now. I mean, it's always been just me, but it's just me. So I have to kind of gauge that. Mm-hmm. Um, you were talking about, let's talk a little bit about the event that we went to. I mean, it was okay. just, I, I listening to you guys, you are much more serious about it. And I was, I was impressed. I said, I, sh- I was thinking that I should have been a little more serious, but I, I loved it. I mean, just to get to know my car, cause I'd never driven it before. Mm-hmm. I mean, on that skidbed, I, I agree with you about, I've never driven with another group besides Porsche and SCDA. They're great, but there was no instruction. I mean, I could, what I couldn't hear my radio, so I didn't come in when I was supposed yeah, to. I, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even. That's the story. I didn't even yeah. hear the radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, we you were, guys we were, were talking saying, about your pauses. Sorry. Go. We were we were saying um, about the not having much instruction. We were it was kind of good for us in a way because we we really just wanted seat time and really didn't right. want to take up the day with sitting in a classroom or anything. So, you know, it it really kind of depends what your needs are, what your your wants are for you know what you want to accomplish. But you know, for us, it was it was great that there wasn't any you know, much instruction because our goal really was just getting in the car and, and doing laps. <laughs> yeah. We, we had, we had to get that feeling mm-hmm. of what it felt like when your car gathers up all that energy and wants to spring back in the other, other direction, how to correct that. I mean, we've been in positions when we've either been afraid of letting the back end go or the back end has gone and we've gone off, you know, right. and we just, we have to master that. And yeah, that's exactly why I was there. I mm-hmm. think it was great. And I'm glad there wasn't, it wasn't as structured as I thought it was going mm-hmm. to be because you were able to go from auto, like we did autocross to, you know, the skid pad again. And I think that was fun for the autocross. I, it was the first time I was on an autocross that they weren't timing us. 
Right. But no, she's saying poor Jen on the autocross because I got sick. Well, (laughs) yeah. Sorry. But, you know, it was really nice not being timed because Mm -hmm. all I was doing is trying to get the the back end out of my, out out on the corners. I wasn't worrying about time. I wasn't worrying about anything. I was driving like a maniac trying to get this car to, to, to slide to oversteer. To oversteer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it, and I was able to just correct it and not worry about my time. Right. You know, that I was going to be embarrassed because I was the f- slowest one out there. I didn't care. I was just throwing that thing around and it was fun. Different I, goals, different oh, goals. Great. That was fun. And thank you for letting me drive your Toyota 86. (laughs) I was going to say that I'm going to, I'm going to have to, uh, to cry foul on this because you saying you didn't care how fast you were. The first thing you said was, whew, you didn't catch me. Uh, so (laughs) so that that was in your car because that was different. (laughs) I was really pushing it to try to, yeah, to try to stay ahead of you. Like that was, and I was chasing that Corvette and I almost caught him. Oh, that vet. <laughs> that Corvette. No. That was a lot of car. Or it sounded like a lot of car. It's a lot of car. Yeah. It's a lot of car. Yeah. That that's a really souped up Corvette. There's a lot of testo- testosterone inside that car. Yeah. Test- yeah. Testosterone macaroni. Yeah. <laughs> he was super. He was very nice. He was very was. nice. He was. And yeah. if he wasn't, he was too big to say he's not. So he was great. <laughs> 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 I think what they were saying is that it, it's a Callaway, which yeah, is, it was a, yeah. yeah, it was Callaway, and then it, he took it in for a second dose of something, and it was just like more Ooh. test. He took it in for more testosterone. More testosterone. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It was, it was and out. it was loud, and I was worried about my car being loud. So I thought your I thought your car was the one making all the loud noises. I'm like, that's a yeah. lot of noise coming from that little car. That's pretty awesome. And then he drove away. I'm like, ah, oh, womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we yeah. put a glass pack muffler on it the day before because it really was loud. It was cut off behind the seat because we we also have a it has a fuel cell. So the exhaust you you talked about one of your cars, the truck ha- having a fuel cell. So you have to reroute the exhaust. Mm-hmm. The car was at a race, um, an endurance race, and they they flagged them for the sound. So they cut he cut it right behind the um, the seats. And it was loud and I love it loud, but I was all of a sudden it's Lime Rock 86 decimals. And I was panicking that we wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would get up there and they'd send me home. So we day before um, Mark took the day off. Well, he wasn't working that day. So we spent the whole day like fabricating, putting this muffler on and it really, really came out good. I mean, sound was great. That Corvette was way louder and yeah. nobody even nobody said anything. So it was fine. Yeah. I was worried for nothing. <laughs> nope. You were you were definitely not the loudest in the uh, in the building. There was a couple others that were even louder uh, in the first yeah. session. So yeah. All right. So uh, so Miss Elizabeth, we have we had uh, two uh, lady mechanics in training on this podcast, and then we have uh, Jennifer, who's really, really in training, and then me, who uh, reluctantly is also in training. So we thought we were going to talk to you and Vicki. We are going to have a dual yeah. question thing on how and why and what you've been doing to basically start from essentially nothing to get to yeah. essentially where you're at in, in terms of working on cars. So if you guys wanted to just kind of why and how and what what got you started we could we could ask more questions with that yes okay absolutely go <laughs> you go first vicky the bulldozer drives through first Shock. so you so so do you want to ask us questions or you just want us to talk about it well <laughs> basically what got you interested in starting it and what got, how did you get rolling from zero because that's that's something that we hear typically for reasons or excuses on why people don't start is because they don't know anything about the car. And I know for a fact, you knew nothing about working on a car. Right. So how'd you get started? Did you take a class or did you like, no, I knew nothing. Um, I went to my first autocross and I didn't have a tire pressure gauge. I mean, these are, you know, I didn't even know how to do that. Um, How to, how to use a torque wrench 
any how to uh, change a tire. I mean, I really had never done any of that. And I all of a sudden I have this 944 and the engine blew and um, I was uh, down here and, you know, what do I do? I at that point, this is two two seasons ago, two years ago, two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. I didn't really even know how to take the tire off properly. I bought my first jack from Harbor Freight and it was too heavy to put it in the car. The guy had to put it in the car for me. So like I was nervous about touching it and picking it up and using it. And I didn't even know I had never jacked up a car and taken a tire off. Like this was exciting for me. And I did that and learned, bought a torque wrench and learned how to do it. And, you know, had some guidance, but basically, you know, I'm on my own and um, Mark was there if I needed any help or had any questions, but kind of figured it out. It didn't, the problem I was having is the names for things like. Yes, the that's socket. the biggest one. And yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, growing up, I, uh, maybe there's women out there that their father taught them how to, how to do mechanical things, but I didn't, I didn't know what it felt like to hold a torque wrench or how to use it or what it, what it is and um, how to put a socket on. And none of it's scary, but when you first do it, it's scary. You don't want to break something. And what I learned is it's pretty hard to, I mean, I've broken things, but it took some effort to break things. You know, it really did. I mean, I over torqued uh, the aluminum cross member and cracked it. But, you know, that I know now not to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was my car. So it's all right. I scrambled and found another cross member. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) yeah, if if you if you look at them like very large craft projects (laughs) and and I brought this up before. I mean, we've we've talked about it Um, again. I have guidance from Alan at the same time. We've been working together on this car like side by side, but then there's times I've been working on the car without him too. And it was just, as I'm working on it, number one, YouTube is awesome. Two is that you have your Haynes books, your, um, what are the books, Bill? They are Bentley, uh, Bentley, Bentley. books. Yeah. yeah. They, they literally break everything down. And then Bill ended up getting an ebook for us that looks more like a parts department um, book online when it actually breaks everything down in detail, almost like an Ikea. Right. So now you can see the exact part that you're looking for that's missing. So this is helpful. But if you look at it like a really, really large craft project, that your, your devices are just different. Your welding would be, which I'm learning welding would be your glue stick, right. you know, and your snips are your scissors. And, you know, of course you're doing your tightening and things like that. And then, um, and those were the helpful units that I got was the YouTube, the books, and of course the guidance at the same time, names were the difficult part. So you did, if you don't know what it's called then how can you go look it up? And then once the, once I found what it was in the books, I'm like, Oh, okay. But right. And learning all of that. Like I, I first, I downloaded the pet with PET, which is the shows all the parts. Right. Downloaded that, put it in a binder. Then I downloaded all the 944 manuals, put that in a binder. And I would just look at it almost every night. And go mm-hmm. through it. Auto Atlanta has the same things, has the diagrams on mm-hmm. their website. And sometimes, you know, click on it and you see what it looks like. Like I'm more visual. So I kind of need to see what the part looks like in the car. Mm-hmm. So going on YouTube, you would see, you see a lot of that, like how mm-hmm. to, you know, I'm doing the front bearings right now. So there's some good YouTube videos that show me what I'm supposed to be doing, but how it looks. Like I know how to do this, but what does it look like? And they say, oh, you know, put it in this way. Well, I have to watch the video over and over to see how it goes in. Mm -hmm. And they don't, you know, they're not explaining that, but I'm looking at visually, what is he doing? Right. And, uh, you know, that, and then you make mistakes and you have to buy the part over again. And it's kind of, that happens. 
absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there, there was yeah. one day after um, after I started really getting into it when everything made sense. I wasn't looking at the car as parts um, as much as how the whole thing worked together. And it just dawned right. on me that it was just a big animatron. Right. With gears <laughs> and pulleys, all of it. And, and I, it, you know, this was my big aha. It's like, it's all nothing but gears and pulleys, all of it. Right. And, and I was like, and it just demystified everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then, and then once, once you got the names for stuff and then once you looked at it as, you know, as the animatron, the, the fluids are, are like, you know, the blood you know, right. and where the heart is and where the brain is. And, and once that kind of started, I was like, Oh, okay. Right. And then it just demystified the entire car. Now I don't mind going in there and just tackling anything. Right. You know, because I, I, having the engine out was, uh, was great because I was able to play with an engine. I cleaned right. it and touching it and, you know, taking the parts off and replacing parts and learning what they do, then I'd see a part and I would go on a YouTube and read articles and read about it and learn what that part does and why it's on there. Because right. with the race car, there's a lot of parts that aren't there. But now I have, we have three 944 road cars that are in various stages of not being able to drive. And working on those, there's more components. So now I'm learning what's the AC? How does that work? You know, this line's, I redid all the vacuum lines. I learned how to do that on one car and I was able to quickly do it on the second car mm -hmm. because it took me so long on the first car. But now I know what to look for um, as far as that. that. That's one of the things I'm lacking is if there's a noise or if there's a problem, I don't have the troubleshooting knowledge, um, but I'm learning. Uh, right. Yeah, I think that comes that comes as you start learning when something goes wrong. This is and you have a mechanic that's there because we all have somebody who is skilled behind us that is also teaching us or that we can lean on to or we can ask questions to. Right. You know, there there is that. Um but that can I mean, especially like if you're at the track, it's like I don't know how to diagnose. I don't know where the sound's coming from. Can you help me? But then you'll remember what that is. Right. You know? Right. And then you can kind of, yeah. kind of jump in or if the car doesn't feel right, you'll know where it, I, I'm, right. not, I'm obviously not there yet no. either, but I haven't tackled this transmission that that part of the car. I haven't. I just touched. did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing suspension right now and I didn't do mm -hmm. the shocks. Um, but I'm upgrading the sway bars, learning mm -hmm. about that, doing mm -hmm. the bushings. I just went with OEM bushings, mm -hmm. um, learning about that in the road car. Um, I've rebuilt calipers, so I'm very good at that for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, doing things like I'm redoing the whole front suspension of this road car, that the 944 that I want to drive. I want to get it on the road. It's red. It's really cute. Um, and now it's clean, the engine, mm -hmm. all new vacuum lines. Like it was fun for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing the front suspension now. So that's a lot of fun. I, um, it, you know, it's going to be put back together after I paint everything. But right. It, You're going to go in there. I'm getting ready to do the same yeah. thing with my Miata, my H yeah. the one that you had seen, the little HBDE car. Yeah. Um, I have to see the documentation that came with the car because I'm not exactly sure what was added to when they put in the turbo. Yeah. But I also don't know how long certain components are or have been on that car. So I don't know if the bushings are original or if, if the front suspension, but I have to put the whole thing up. And fortunately this time around, we're getting a lift put in our hangar, right. which is going to be awesome. <laughs> so I can actually just lift the whole thing up and go ahead and, and, and do an inspection and see what yeah, because you'll know them. with the bushings as soon as you see them. Yeah, you'll, exactly. you'll know if they're original. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the one thing with the, the, the race truck that we had is because um, we didn't know everything that we needed to do in the off season. As part of our learning, 
you know, we just kind of figured it was fluids and you change the brakes and the whatever, but we didn't know the deep dives you had to take. So when this past season we did the deep dive, we just realized how bad everything was. And this is the reason why our cars kept breaking down this right. particular truck. And then we just had to go and pull everything apart. And the best thing that John, it was a friend of ours, John Lavin said in one of our podcasts, we're just like in the off season, what, how do you work on a car? What do you do in the off season? He goes, you replace everything that goes were, <laughs> you have to inspect it. I'm just like, Oh, <laughs> And that was like a big eye-opening, dawning moment for me. I'm like, we really got to pull this car apart. Right. And then when we started to, when Alan and I started pulling this car apart, we're just like, we have to replace almost everything except that engine. And we haven't even pulled the engine apart to kind of check on the inside. But I mean, everything that, uh, it was terrible. Yeah. We were pulling parts off from just like, I cannot believe that this whole thing didn't fall off. So- <laughs> <laughs> but, but touching everything and yeah. having a name for everything now, instead of what it, what it, sh you know, it's the front suspension. Well, now I know what a front suspension is. I know all the stuff. Right. Right. You know? And I enjoy that. And yeah. I started doing wiring, which is a whole nother project. And I vowed that I wouldn't tackle wiring. So mm -hmm. I did on the 944 race car and I actually got the car running. And then something happened. And I don't know if you listen to my race car build, um, but I, I, it didn't run anymore. So it was put in timeout. So I started working on the red car, the road car. And I started, I got the diagrams, you know, the, the electrical diagrams with help from people sent them to me. And I blew them up and had Sharpies and highlighters. And all I, I started with the battery and I went line by line and I ripped open all the wiring because I had done that on the 944. So I could trace the wires. Um, I have some good harness wraps, so I rewrapped them. But in the nine, in the rate road car, I just started from one wire and followed it all the way and mm -hmm. learned, you know, the fuses and rewired the DME and the fuel pump and, you no, know, it was it it was exciting because I was underneath the car. I had wires everywhere, but I'd find a wire that was burnt. There was plenty of burnt wires in this 944, the the red one. I would just follow the wire and I would learn I learned how to crimp, I learned how to do all of that, solder the wires. I mean, it was it it took me all winter and that's what I did is underneath that dashboard and uh and and redid all the the few the relays and replaced all the fuses and then the car started and it was it has been sitting for two years and it oh. start and it's it and then I was like all but, right but now, I'm sure you would just jump it up and down and got out and like high-fiving yourself <laughs> oh I was dancing around the garage I was doing a little dance Mark was laughing at me I said I can't believe it it started right up like no rah, 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 nothing just boom right up and I, I tell you believe it it was so when, exciting. When we took that truck out um, and after, I mean, we had just done the transmission, we'd done the clutch. Um, we had to reattach the drivetrain. Uh, we had to pull the motor out just a little bit because we had to redo the motor mounts. And then we did the entire front end and we did the water pump. We did the the fuel pump. We did the belts. Um, and, and, you know, as we're taking more and more deep dive, we had to pull the steering column out because we the the rag bushing, that was in there. I believe that's what it's called. Rag joint. Yeah. was bad. So we had to pull the whole thing out and put another one. Of course, I kept trying to order this, this, this intermediate piece that just wasn't coming in. Alan's like, let's just rebuild it. So I ended up finding this wonderful um, uh, metal fabricator company. It's just a couple wow. guys and they start fabricating parts that don't work. We had to redo the clutch because the, 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 the firewall, um, was, didn't fit, was, was cut wrong to fit the new clutch master. So they actually built a new component for me. They measured up on the computer and, you know, so we did all of this stuff. And when that thing started up, I, <laughs> I was like, it runs, it runs. 
goes dancing up and down. It runs. It runs. Look what we did. It was, when it was I, so enjoyable. When we put the engine back in the 944, I put the clutch fork in backwards. <laughs> so oh we get God. everything on and I was putting the, the, the uh, whatever, the starter on uh-huh. and it's not going on because the clutch fork is backwards. So that was a whole project. So I learned about clutch forks and how they go in now. So now I know, and I'll never make that mistake. Again. Right. So <laughs> the one thing that we, that I, I started getting, um, that started helping with me is taking pictures with your camera from what everything that you pulled apart, just so you know how it all goes back again. Yeah. Cause that's the thing. And the other part that, that we're still trying to tackle which I think we might have um, is remembering where all the bits and pieces go. Like well, the, pro- my nuts, the proper bolts, the proper yeah. everything. Right. Um, because they get shuffled when you have yeah. all these things off of your car. So Bill ended up buying these colored trays now. Yeah, magnetic trays. They're magnetic trays, but they're all painted. So we have green and we have red and we have blue now. And of course we have the silver. And black. So now we and know. Black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now they all have like this tray is all for the tire stuff, you know, this tray, you know, and we don't get them mixed up now, but that was a thing. Like I kept trying to label bags, you know, right. put everything we, in a bag. bag. Yeah. Ziploc bags. And that was a big <laughs> thing that this, I mean, like we're missing a couple bolts. Like, I don't know what happened to them. You know, they were right here. But when so. I first started, I was, um, I was getting OEM bolts and nuts and trying to like be exact. And now I've learned that it really doesn't matter. Just get the bolt that fits. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we, we have, have a, a bucket bolt. of bolts. Yeah, we bucket just, of bolts. Yeah, it's I, not, I, it doesn't matter. Like the yeah. guys, like on the Facebook group, are like um, Elizabeth. It it really doesn't matter. Just get some seat time. Like it really doesn't matter what bolt you go in. Like you don't need yeah. to spend five dollars on that bolt. Just clean up the one you have and put it back in. <laughs> right, and, and that's and that's the one thing that we 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 started. Um, we went to our first race and we needed a bolt, so we went over to our friends. A three pedal, and they just handed us a Ziploc bag of nuts and bolts. Oh, it was a gallon. And it was a it, gallon. Yeah. Jug. Yeah. It was a gallon jug. The bottom part of, I think, like an oil container or something like that, that was cleaned out. And it was like, this is the best thing ever. Because, <laughs> because whatever we needed was going to be in there. So that's what we're doing. We're pulling it all apart. So now yeah. we have a bucket of bolts of just stuff that's laying around. Yeah. We just throw it in the bucket and you know, most there's always in something there. you need. Yeah, it yeah. has to be in there. Well, right. with all the 944s, we can interchange the parts because they're all the same year, except for we're the not turbo. that lucky. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of did that by design. So and we have a parts car now. So I can just I um I'm notorious for for breaking brake lines when I'm when I'm taking the calipers off. I've done we've I've broken quite a few. So now we have the parts car and instead of fabricating a new brake line, which is what Mark would do, I was like, well, can you get me this brake line off the car, the donor car? You know, now he comes, here it goes, looks good. It wasn't very rusty, you know, I had some rust on it, but not bad. Looks good. Put it in. I was like, so happy. Like we don't have to do anything. It doesn't have to use the flare tool and all of that. And that was another thing. I didn't mean, I just bulldozed you and I'm yeah. really sorry, but, but you just brought, I know no, <laughs> you just brought up a good point though, is that there's a lot to be said for a donor car to come in. And that way you can kind of see how things are supposed to be before you pull it apart, obviously, but right. um, having a donor car that you can pull other parts off of is, is really a great idea to have if you're building something. Or if you have something that you're racing, having that donor car on the side, excellent idea to have. And you can, it could be somebody's wreck, you know, somebody just learned the other day, which this is a ridiculous thing that I didn't know. I was thinking this 944 didn't have windshield washer. I was like, how can it not have a windshield washer? Well, the hoses are on the hood. 
which I didn't realize. And the hood is in the other all my two 944s I work on, the hoods are not there. You know, mm-hmm. They get in the way. And I looked at the donor car, I was like, oh, the hoses and the little spigots that that eject the water are on the hood. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I so, mean, <laughs> I know that's a little silly, but I really didn't even notice it. Mm-hmm. So I fixed that, you know, yeah. one project at a time. I just yeah. got a stereo for it. So now I'm doing stereo work. Um, mm-hmm. The prior owner had has it all wired to an amplifier that's half of it's wired, half of it's not. So I'm working to put my new radio in because it has Bluetooth and that's what I need. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But that's a mess. So yeah. Uh, and <laughs> honestly, when you're working on the cars, when, when you're actually doing the work, part of it is necessity. If you yeah. just want to save money, you're going to have to learn how to do it. Right. Now, now, sometimes, you know, we, we send the, the cars out for, for minor things that we don't want to manage. You know, like I've, I've really kind of busted it on this car right now. And honestly, while it's out getting the alignment done, just change the oil for me. Cause I don't, I'm, you know what? I'm done. You know, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. Like I've just done all this work. Just, just do the oil. Cause I, I could do the oil. Yeah. Yes. But while it's there, just do it. <laughs> you know, well, some, well, it's, some not some exciting. Stuff. it's not exciting anymore it's, to do the oil. <laughs> no, it's not exactly. Exactly. You know, and for a couple bucks, you know, throw it their yeah. way, you know, but yeah, um, yeah. It's not that exciting anymore. Yeah. So let me ask a question. <laughs> our, our first question of the segment. <laughs> first question. <laughs> so now that you have all of this knowledge, how easy is it to transfer to, say, a different type of car? Oh, good question. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Um, Cause, cause I my had... thing is like, it's like a cell phone. They're all just a little bit different. <laughs> Yeah, they're, uh, I mean, a 944s, and I had a Cayenne as well that, um, that we did, a, you know, I did a lot of work on. And then I got a BMW um, X5 that currently is not working um, and did some work on that. And it was easier, much easier mm-hmm. to get to. And that was great because I could, you know, I could do the work on it. My father has a, um, a, a what does he have? A Nissan Frontier. And I did a whole, we took it for the weekend. We did all the brakes, um, did the oil, did the transmission fluid, like took it apart, put new fuel injectors, like did the whole thing um, Mm -hmm. for his maintenance, for his car, detailed the car. And that was pretty easy to work on. And I was happy about that. Um, Compared to the 944, it was pretty easy. (laughs) I think think the, the, the thing that matters more is the vintage of the car not mm-hmm. not the year that the car came out but the year the car was designed so like a car that came out in a similar era is going to be similar to a lot of the cars that came out in that era so like a 944 is like a mid 80s let's say another car that came out in the mid 80s is going to be fairly similar but a, a newer car is going to be a little different because you go from carburetors to fuel injection and things like that but in general right. a lot of it's going to be similar but the specifics can be tricky and there's certain tricks that you need to know for certain brands or certain models, but right. you learn those just by banging your YouTube. head against the wall. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. YouTube. Yeah. They they all have basically the same components. Yeah. It just might be in different places. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. And it really does translate. You can now work on another car with the knowledge that you just to work on the 944. I can now work on my dad's car. Um, I don't, prefer to in newer cars i don't think i would touch there's too many electronics and yeah I, I, too many I, computer I, stuff yeah too much going on <laughs> yeah so is there anything left that you guys are interested in in terms of learning or trying to get into in terms of cars is there any part of the car or system of the car that i need to learn wiring next i need to learn the electricals um but and, and at some point, I want to be able to pull the engine apart, which I think one winter, I think probably next winter, since most of the truck is done, we're going to have to pull winter. the engine. Yeah. 
Well, no, that was I'd, this winter. <laughs> I'd like to learn more the transmission side of it. And um, in the top end of the engine, I, I'm not I'm not familiar with that, how the pistons work, how all of that works. It, that mm-hmm. that seems scary to me. Um, I did the bearings, which is good. You know, I was supposed to do those uh, every season, I guess. Well, the car hasn't been out, so I don't need to do it. But, you know, I, I just, the top end of the engine scares me because I don't know anything about that, so I can leave that. Um, the transmission, I, I know basically how to put it together. I know where the clutch is because I've taken it apart and put it in. But I don't know a lot about that and um, alignments. I really want to learn to do my own alignments. And that's something that I definitely need to learn. Um, like- welding is another thing. Welding. that you Yeah, started welding is, yeah. is, yeah, welding is what I'm learning right now. Okay. Um, when we get a little bit more time, but I, I spent a whole afternoon with our friend, John Lavin. And while they were working on the car, I was having mini welding classes and he would come over and check my work you know so I got to use all his cool tools and his welders and his cutters and everything and he was just like okay this is what it's supposed to look like and this is what yours looks like and this is what you have to work on then he would go back and he would do his thing and he'd come back and check on me it was great it was it was awesome yeah Jen do you do any work on the cars um I'd like to (laughs) <laughs> Jen lives a little bit far away. I live far away and it's it's hard for for oh, me. Vicky. And I Vicky is so much more advanced than I am. So I'm here around it all the time. She's yeah. yeah. So when I come up, I just feel a little lost. But I we think can, we, we can send plan. you a car to work on. Yeah, Jen, Jen comes into the garage and she's like, just point to me and tell me where you want me to go. Like, give me a job to do. Yeah, I, I am very much also a visual hands on type of person. Like, I need to see it. I need to do it to learn like yeah so it it makes it really hard when i live so far away Mm -hmm. yeah but jennifer comes up and and because we're both extremely artsy that this is our time too when we are working on the truck and theming is we 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 kind of have a blast with it so like uh, i love that 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 for the lemons thing the whole team i put that together i was so proud of it i love uh-huh. doing that yeah that we just great. sanded the, the car down uh the truck down completely yesterday we've got our panels designed we got all the 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 stuff in um uh, sanded everything was sanded down yesterday we painted today we rolled nice. the air compressor over to the other hangar we got the paint brought in and got our coats on so mm-hmm. tomorrow is decaling and laying oh, vinyls fun. So, and then we still have to do the panels for the back sides. Um, it turned out so good. Bill, we're right on schedule. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> yeah. Bill so fell we, asleep. Yeah, <laughs> Alan's supposed to, yeah. Alan's coming in on Friday, probably doing a crossover with Jennifer because Jennifer's pulling out on Friday. So we, we have a scraping with the, something's going on with the brake pads. We're not really pushing the truck at all. So you know, he's like, how was going on with the brakes and the tires? And we're just like, that is not even on our schedule. Right. You know, just when he gets here, we'll look at it then, but we have a time frame to work within before she heads out. What's your, when's your next event? Two weeks. Yeah. Not this weeks. weekend. 15th. Not this weekend. Next weekend. Next weekend. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll be ready. Jennifer's going to go home and do the camp stuff mm-hmm. and get the camp stuff ready. And then we'll meet her over right. in um, Pittsburgh. Oh, nice. Oh, so, yeah. The pit race. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, she's she's she has offered to do all the food for us and bring the uh, the trailer and we have a trailer being delivered. Mm-hmm. So, oh, nice. yeah, yeah, that I can do. But I, I have summers <laughs> off. So, you know, kind of coming up during the summer is is a little easier than during the winter. Because where do you where do you live if you don't? I, don't I live know. in Delaware. Um, so it's about what, two and a half hours, Mm -hmm. three hours. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It all depends on Philly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd have to leave on a Friday, which is a beast in the blue route. Yeah. 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 And we're, we're up in Northeast Pennsylvania. So so. it makes a week, like a weekend tough. Um, but when the, when the summer rolls around, then Jennifer will park her trailer right outside the air hangar. 
and they'll stay at the trailer <laughs> the whole time. They'll plug into the air hanger and uh, yeah, oh, they'll hang nice. out there. Well, it was covetized, so it saves them from getting a hotel room. So oh, yeah. they hang out down there and we just will work for like a week. She's She's been mm-hmm. up for like, I think a total of like maybe three weeks in the summertime mm-hmm. on and off. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, that's and, nice. And we'll just work on getting the stuff ready for the races. Because at that like point a, we were doing two cars. Sounds you know? like a great way to prep for an old girl car entry, perhaps New Jersey or Thompson. I, it just, you know, top of my head, just, you know, thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just parks. Parking rate. We let we let the people know at the airport. Oh, you have a trailer gonna be staying here. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Bill, was it a mistake having me on? Because you haven't said one thing. <laughs> I, 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 I knew it was going to be one of those. And uh, I'd like to welcome Elizabeth. And I just sit there and go. Doo, 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 doo. I, I could edit a podcast while you guys are doing it. I think I think we you literally all asked, girls podcast. Uh, yeah. might, as, might as well. I don't get to talk anyway. So. <laughs> but I, I think that as as you know, before we we finish off on this one part, um, as it goes for working on a car, there are a lot of information that's out there and it's just a matter of learning what it's called and putting your hands on it, pulling yeah. it off, putting it back on. That's Having it. the proper the proper tools work. I was yes. hammering something with the back of the ratchet the other day and Mark came over with the correct tool and he's like, it works with the correct tool. Yes. <laughs> extenders are awesome. I found the value of an extender. And a wobbler. Yeah. And the wobbler. Yes, that too. So I, but there's certain it, tools that I just love. I just love certain tools. What is tools. your favorite one? Oh, I don't know the name of it, but it's a, like a clamp. Um, what is it called? Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, um, I don't know. You turn the screw and you clamp it and it stays closed. Vice grip. I love those. Oh, the vice grip. Those are great. Those are so great. I love them. I don't, I didn't know anything about it. That, I just love it. (laughs) And the breaker, the breaker bar. Breaker bars are so satisfying. They are so satisfying. Yes, Bill. So the key to upgrading the breaker bar is to get the ratcheting extension that's like two in, an inch long, and then you can ratchet with your breaker bar. Oh, that would be great. Mm-hmm. So Alan, well, had like- just, yeah. Alan had just introduced me to attachment that on the drill, I'm trying to remember what it did. The one that the, pretends to be a socket. Yeah, it's, it's like a it's ratchet. A- but it doesn't yeah and it's like an yeah for the sockets which was awesome so that that was like and you use the the small drill because it doesn't add a lot of torque pressure so i was like i love our air compressor i was always so afraid of the air compressor and Mm -hmm. now that i use it oh i love that thing it is so great (laughs) there was nothing more exciting than getting parts and tools for christmas Oh yeah, I did. I got a parts washer last year. He bought me a parts washer Aww, for my birthday. That's <laughs> and awesome. I got a painless wiring system for the 944 this year. So I, now you I get know it's wire. so exciting. <laughs> like I got I got uh, struts for my my uh, my no. little Miata, and I was just like, this is the greatest was, gift it, ever. It, it really is. The parts <laughs> washer was like amazing. I was like. This is the best gift ever. <laughs> it, right? It is. It really is. Yes. <laughs> okay, you too. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it. He's gonna he's gonna clip out everything. <laughs> no. We just gonna do an introduction and a thank you at the end, and the rest of this is all trash. All right, all Vicky. Right. Vicky. Good. Mm-hmm. Fire it up. Oh, are we going to go for it? Or do you think we should have her back? Well, I, th- I think we should go for it. We'll do a truncated version of the Fast and Furious story time questions. We're doing the Fast and Furious story time <laughs> questions. All right. We're going to go for it. All right. So as you know, you probably heard on our podcast, we do the Fast and Furious story time questions are a little bit. They can be a little bit more, but um, 
they're usually just whatever comes off in the top of your head and Jennifer will kick us off. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. It's not like we've done this before. Well, first car. I don't car. memorized yet. First okay. car, worst okay. car. What was your very first car and what was the worst car you've ever had? Oh my goodness. My first car was a yellow B210 and her name was Heather. I loved it. <laughs> Broke down the first week I had her. Oh, it was great. And what's the worst car I ever had? Mm-hmm. The same oh, one. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. No, because that was my first baby. That was my first car. Um, I have to say my worst car was a 99 BMW. And it, it was the first car out of law school. I got my first BMW. But I had so many problems with the suspension. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have looked at it, you know, because I, <laughs> I could have learned about it. But I took it to the shop so many times. I hit a pothole coming home from the dealer, and it seemed like it messed it up for the rest of its life. Um, oh. It was always having trouble. So hmm. more questions. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. What was the one thing that no one knows about you that would surprise them? That I like cars. That would probably be it. That you work on cars. Yeah. <laughs> that I work on cars. Yeah. Um, yeah. I used to ride horses. I was on the polo team at UConn. Yay. Oh, wow. Yay. That's a good one. Yeah. Awesome. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is a good one. We haven't had that one before. That's for sure. <laughs> some people start I, out with go karts. Yeah. You know, some, some start out with yeah. polo. <laughs> <laughs> it's water polo they're different no horse unless the no, horses can horse, hold it horse polo not water polo oh i thought you said water polo i'm sorry i was gonna say those horses can't hold their breath that long um so do you have a taproot car that got you started in this automotive bug is there a car we could trace this back and and blame the boxster that i bought oh, okay. yeah probably the first boxster that kind of started it Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, my father and I had gone to, um, Porsche had a, a world tour. This is how it really started. Uh, they had a world tour and what you did, it was basically an autocross. They had a small autocross where they had a Panamera, um, and a Panamera turbo or a Panamera S and a Panamera. So you did a little autocross and then you did a big autocross and what they had for the cars that it was all, you all follow the leader. And my father and I were there and I, I, I never saw my dad smile so much. Both of us were grinning ear to ear all day. We got to drive a 911, a 911 GTS, a oh, Cayman, a Cayman GTS. And um, there was five cars. I don't know what the last one was, but we'd rotate. And it was so much fun. And it was an autocross. And that's, that's really what sparked it. I, I couldn't. Uh, it was the best day. Um, it was so, I was so happy they, the gentleman I bought my Porsche from invited us. That was what started it. And I was like, this is autocross. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. So track, so, track is better. <laughs> <laughs> what is that car from your family that sticks out in your mind? Car from my family. I, my first car I drove, um, now looking back at the cars that my mother had a 240 SX was really nice. She had an Integra a brand new Integra off the showroom floor. Um, but I learned on a, um, a, a Ford Escort. That's Ooh. what I learned. And uh, spinning around the parking lot and hitting the e-brake. Like, I remember doing that. So, and, and people on Facebook from my high school are like, of course you drive. You always were the driver. Like, you always <laughs> drove. And I don't remember doing that. But the Ford Escort was so much fun. <laughs> So, um, automatic stick paddles, or you just don't care? Um, it, it depends. If I'm driving, my Boxster was um, a, a manual. And if I'm in traffic, because I do a lot of driving, if I'm in traffic, my knee gets tired. I know this is like first world problems, but I, I get tired driving on the highway in a manual. Yeah. And like going to the Cape, Cape Cod or anywhere a long distance, it's tough in a manual, but doing any motorsports, it has to be a manual. I mean, really, 
you just have to. I yeah. know the automatics, the Porsche automatic PDK is supposed to be faster, but I'm not at that level where a hundred tenths matters in my life. <laughs> you know, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> that, yeah. That's not the part to keeping us slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> yeah. There's other things yeah. to do. It's yeah. kind of like the, why don't you get the, uh, the carbon carbon uh, hood scoop? I'm like, if I want to lose weight, there's lots of weight I can lose that I don't have to spend thousands of dollars to buy a piece. I can just like not eat. But right. That's fine. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just need to be a better driver. Seat exactly. time. Seat time. Seat's good. Seat time. Do you have a car that got away? Um, I, no, not really. Um, I, I, I probably regret buying a Boxster base instead of a Boxster S. That's probably one of my regrets. Mm -hmm. Although before I bought it, I did have them put an OEM um, sport exhaust in it. And it had sport mode. And when you turn that on with the exhaust, it really, there was nothing like that sound. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't an S. So it needed a little more oomph. But Always. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so what areas or area of driving and or racing are you working on this off season? Off I think season. we just We're already talked about we just, we just talked all about that, didn't we? We're not off season. We're going into on We're season. Going to, so do you have any of your cars ready? <laughs> yes, the E30 is ready. And my seating position in it is absolutely perfect. I, I, I can't believe I'm not reaching for the pedals, which I do in the 944. I drove um, a, one of the instructors, Lotus um, Exige. Mm -hmm. um, S or SC, whatever it is. And I couldn't, re I could barely reach the pedals. Um, the 944, my seating position is just off. I had done a track day and the next day my shoulder was so bruised and hurt and my back hurt for a good week. So I know my seating position was wrong, but I was reaching for the pedals and that's not good. This no. E30 fits me like a glove. I really, really, I, I can't believe it. I was able to throw this car around and not think about my seating position. I could I could feel the pedals. I could feel the car. It was just so eye-opening. Um, I need to get my 944 like that because I'm not comfortable driving it. Mm -hmm. right. I can't what's, wait to throw the E30 around. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the fastest you've ever driven? What car and where and when? I, I've been been driven um, probably fastest. I Probably I would say... Um, my, I had a BMW um, that had like an M package on it, getting on the highway. I think I got that car up to like 150. Um, and, and that's the fastest I've been. On the track, see, I have slow cars. So none yep. of the cars, you know, the, the straights aren't that long, probably 130 maybe. Right. Um, like yep. I tell uh, everybody who asks how fast you've gone, it's about lap times. It's not about speed. <laughs> it's about the turns. It's about the turns, yes. <laughs> All right. The question the girls won't ask because they hate it. Uh, Jeremy, Hammond, May, Chris, Matt, other? Oh, Jeremy Hammond. Okay. Very well. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite car movie or car from a movie of all time? Oh, there's so many good car movies. Um car that I love. I mean, I just love the Koenigsegg. Oh, what a nice car. What car, what, I can't even remember what movie it was in. Probably Transformers. Didn't they have a Pagani in that? I um, Zonda, yeah. yeah. So I really love those kind of cars. Um, movies I like, you know, of course, Bullet. Um, and I really, I bought a Mini Cooper and I know it's, cliche to say you bought it after you watched the bank job but that i did i did buy it because i love that movie and to get a car that can drive downstairs and sideways into a train i mean who's better than that you know <laughs> <laughs> that's what i thought i'm like this car can go sideways into a train like who's cooler than that <laughs> so i really like that movie 
So where would your ultimate road trip be from and to and in what car? Oh, I guess from and to. I, w- I would like to go out and um, or drive down to Sebring and race at Sebring and drive at, drive at Sebring. So I think that's, I don't know if that's a road trip. It's Sounds Florida, like but <laughs> I, I've been to Flo- I've been to Sebring. I um, went down there and volunteered for a race and I would love to drive that track. Um, I don't know. I haven't, that's it. That's, pretty much as exciting as it gets <laughs> that's what you want to do that's that's good yeah uh what car if any would you want to wipe away from history really why would you ask that uh, um, it, it's a question <laughs> like bill has it on here i hate the question I but know, we ask like, it is there really a bad car no i mean what's what car's bad i i don't uh, i i pro- like she loves looking, them so much. I know. I love, <laughs> I mean, when somebody, you know, if I have a friend who makes fun of somebody else's car, I'm just like, well, it's their first car. Like, it doesn't matter. Every car has its own personality mm-hmm. and everybody loves their car for specific reasons. Um, I don't think there's any bad cars, you know. All right. So I've got a question we've never asked before. Oh, no. Um, so... Uh, for this ladies' uh, team, should we have the uh, the El Jefe race truck, the Honda Civic, or the E30? That's the question. E30. Okay. E30. Ladies. Well, you've driven them all, right? Or maybe the truck. I was listening to your podcast. That sounds like fun. They're, they're all fun. They're just different, <laughs> different types of fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very well. So in your opinion, what is your favorite track and your favorite turn so far? I really haven't done many tracks. I've done, you know, the ones local here. I loved Watkins Glen. And what I said when I got back from Watkins Glen is it was a big boy track. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a speed track and I didn't have a speed car, but Mm -hmm. I just, I mean, that was a big boy track. So I was really excited to be there i would like uh, the problem with that track for hpd is um it's so long that you don't get a good good chance to learn the corners and and learn you know the limits you can do on the corners because you don't see them that much in a 20 minute session Mm -hmm. um whereas lime rock it's only a minute so you know you see quite a bit in 20 minutes but um yeah i really liked sebring um my favorite corner I like the S's at Sebring. I really wow. like that because I, I could, I, I started to get really, I mean, in my opinion, I started to really tackle that. Mm-hmm. Um, that was nice. So uh, yeah, it's good. Um, in your opinion also, uh, how much do you think of racing as being learned versus natural skill? Um, I think a lot of it is learned. I mean, yeah, there are people out there that have natural skill, but I think with enough seat time, it's, it's learned. I think you can learn to be a better driver. Um, If I had, you know, resources to take a year off, I would just, you know, that's what we always say. If you win the lottery, what would you do? I would, you know, I would go out and just have somebody coach me for a year. I think that would, that would be, be fun. That would be amazing. Mm-hmm. I'd be yeah, right there that's with all you. I would do. Yeah. All right, just, you win your lottery, we'll win our lottery, and I'll I'll come with you. We'll just go hang out at the track for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could rent the whole track and get a you professional could just buy driver. A track. Buy a track. You win the lottery, you just buy the track. <laughs> no, because then that limits you to one track. So <laughs> you, you have to go see true. the competition. So you know. That's okay. You just hire Ross Bentley for the year and he follows you around and you could do mock races. He could have his friends show up and right. it would be very nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ross. She said it, but didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows it. <laughs> <laughs> very well. Here, how about this? Okay. Um. As far as your driving and racing, uh, what is something that you are relatively good? Go ahead. At yes. 
do that again. We'll edit that part out. As far as you're driving and racing, what is something you're relatively good at? <laughs> so, the, so the point, the point of the question is, let's just make an assumption that none of us on this podcast right now are a 10 driver in an absolute scale, but absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going way out on a limb there. Okay. But right now you're 10 or, or what would be what would be something that you're relatively good at relative to the rest of your driving? Like, what do you think is one of your strong points? I guess uh, my strong points with driving, or yeah. I mean, driving and racing. I think I'm I'm a little more technical. As when I have instructors, I get much more confidence, and I move, I I progress for the weekend there much faster. I think I'm good at direction from a coach. Um, it, it gives me confidence. That's what I'm lacking right now. So if I have a coach with me, it's, it's for me, it's just, I, I guess I need that rah, rah, somebody to push me and then I can go back out the rest of the weekend. I'm fine by myself be, for some reason, but I am good at taking direction. I am good at learning from that right away. I'm also, uh, I think, good at watching the videos and learning how people are driving based off of the videos because I'm more visual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. If there was something that you wanted to work on that you could get a little better, what would be something you'd work on or focus on coming up? My braking. I I think I brake too early. I brake too hard. Um, Learning how to threshold brake a little more. Um, I, I I don't, I don't really know the corners yet. I don't know the different types of corners. And I think with the E30, now that I've done this skid pad, I'm not going to be afraid of kicking the, kicking it out, mm-hmm. um, over steer, um, under steer. The, the car is pretty planted. I was very excited. It, it was difficult to get it to kick out, which is, which is one of the things I learned from that whole experience is it's really not that easy to, to lose traction. It, 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 it was surprising to me. And I know I'll be a much more aggressive driver because I was able to do that with this car because it really wasn't easy to make it slide. Um, yeah, the so. limits are pretty high on that car. Yeah, I was very happy with that. And I had pretty bald tires. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so I think I'm going to be a much more um, confident driver than I've been in the past couple of years. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome. That's plenty. That's a great answer. Mm-hmm. So what are you currently working on for the upcoming race season, Elizabeth? Um, as far as what? The cars or um, the 940? I would like to take the 944 to exactly what we did, a clinic, and learn mm-hmm. the limits of that car and try to get a better seating position um, in, in that car. So the... The E30, there's nothing I need to work on right now on that car. Um, it's just the 944 we need to rip out. I need to take out all the wiring and put the painless system in. Mm-hmm. And then that car will be ready. So. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if anybody wanted to follow your adventures on your car, um, is there any way people can keep in contact or follow you or are you on your team? Are you on Instagram or Facebook or anything? I'm on Facebook. I don't go on as much as I probably should, but um, Facebook, my name is Elizabeth Auto, um, Autocross Elizabeth, A-U-T-O-X Elizabeth. Okay. And that's my Facebook. And it's okay. just dog, dogs and cars. Dogs and cars. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Follow the adventure. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. all right well now we just have to find another female who'll say yes and then we have to decide if it's new jersey or thompson or new hampshire i guess we could do all three either one doesn't really matter mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thompson's perfect because it's 20 minutes 30 minutes from me thompson. okay sounds like thompson <laughs> ladies we need to get that uh honda going or the e30 it's so either one or the e30 we'll have more podcast off talk soon Yes, we Sounds will. like great. All right, yeah. Miss Elizabeth, it was great meeting you again for the second or third time, if you count podcast land, I guess. I don't know. but uh, It was awesome. You guys are great, really. I was very happy to meet you and hang out with you all day. It was great. Well, 
we had a great time. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see Elizabeth's first, uh, after her first run in her new E30, you could tell that she, uh, she liked it a little bit. Uh, she, she was, she was quite happy. And, uh, We've got some pictures and some videos that we need to share. As soon as I can get uh, everything straightened out, I will be doing that. And uh, Oh, good. Please, please. And uh, looking forward to our lady race. And uh, I will be the sous chef of the weekend. And uh, we will make sure that your food is up to your standards and that your, your car seats are warm and dry. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the rest of it's up to you guys. Okay, cool. Very good. Thank you for having me on. It was okay. so nice. It was great having you. And uh, thank you again. Thanks. Dominating with Dawson. Ben Dawson from Dominating with Dawson. Please come in, please. Hello. Hello. Dawson Hello. here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so so we've got some questions that are going to take advantage of your cart experience, sir. All right. I'm into it. Okay. So carting, indoor versus outdoor. What's your thoughts? Uh the real competition karting I did where you had to buy like a $2,000 chassis and then spend more money than you have on the engines was uh, outdoor on an oval. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the kind of consumer karting that we can go do, like there's usually one in every town, one or two in mm -hmm. every town where you can go drive the, the carts on the inside. And so kind of like a road course with a bunch of tires set up. That's a whole different kind of deal. It's sort of a different level of competition, but it's a lot of fun. There's still, you still get lab times and there's still people who are fanatics about going out there. And, you know, like there's, at least in my experience, there's one like an hour away uh, that we can go, go right at. And it's, pretty competitive. I mean, I still show up there with my road course racing helmet every time I go in clubs, you know, so I'm a big dork about it. I went to the one in Raleigh, which is kind of close, but not, not terribly. Right. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Rush yeah. hour. Yep. And then, uh, electric versus gas. Uh, I love, I've only done electric one time. I did it out in Irwindale, I think. Um, but I thought they were great because, um, unlike gas, you can hear everything the tires are telling you immediately, like the whole time. You know, there's no, there's no engine noise. So you could hear the tires and I thought that that'd be better able to be fast. Cause it's like, I wasn't, the engine noise wasn't masking some communication from the tires. So I thought I love the electric car, electric cars. And I think, you know, I think they did the, the power and the delivery felt fairly similar, maybe a little more sudden than a gas car, but yeah, I loved it. If you give me a choice, I would run electric every time. Especially indoor. Yeah. It's just, there's sure. no fumes so, <laughs> you've never even thought about the accumulation of the fumes of those, of those metal buildings full of go-karts <laughs> not that i care i'm sure but it's probably not great <laughs> no probably not it just smells right so miss jen i was there for your first ever karting experience besides disney <laughs> you, were, you were a little surprised i was i liked it a lot yeah so what was the, what was the big uh, takeaways from that first time? I don't know. It was just fun. Mm -hmm. It was it was it. I don't know. It's just fun. Yeah, it was. So yeah. so Jennifer and uh, her son Jacob and and Mia and I go to this track and there's <laughs> nobody there. I mean, it is ghost town. Just the four of us and the guy running it. So we go in there and we get like. I think we got like a six pack or something for each. And the guy's like, Hey, there's nobody here. So for you guys, since you're the only ones here, instead of doing the normal 10 minutes, we're going to do 20 minutes. And Jacob's like, yeah. And Jennifer's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, <laughs> this is going to suck. <laughs> Y'all got wrecked. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know what happened. I know what happened. I was good for like twelve minutes, man. But, but those last day, those last minute, I was aching. I was bark, dogs barking. I guarantee was, you felt like you got beat up by an aluminum baseball bat the next I did. day. Did you? You don't realize how much go karting takes out. <laughs> oh of you my physically. gosh, it's so much rattling <laughs> yeah. in your body. <laughs> yeah, your body's the suspension. That's the secret. It is. <laughs> it's it's like did, 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 uh, like around the track the entire time. So yeah. it's, it's like holding onto a jackhammer. <laughs> Yeah, the place, the place in Raleigh replaced their cars at one point, and instead of being kind of, I guess they had less chassis flex, but like going around the corner for a long time until these cars got settled in, it was like, bum, 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 was just terrible. And your ribs get beat up. Yeah. And God forbid the kid that's 12 years old just rams you. 
Oh my gosh, oh, because somebody did that to Bill and Bill years. Bill rammed him back. <laughs> Bill, we went to the beach one time for, for goat for carting and Listen, Bill was ramming here, the kids here, off the truck. Yeah. Bill was Bill was like going after the kids. What are you ramming them off. What did, I don't I don't remember this. I don't so, remember the, No, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't. You well, like, it Bill, leave the kids alone. They they were on the truck. They're on the track. They're on the track. That's right. So, Miss Jen, I remember your eyes got really, really wide when you had spun out and I was coming down the straightaway and you were pointing the wrong way. <laughs> well, they were gas, I believe. And yes, they were. Yeah, I needed a little help. Need a little help. You got a little got a little stook. Yeah. And uh, not in a great spot, but, you know, there was enough room. We were good. Well, that's all right. It was still fun once I got going again. Absolutely. So we've gone a several times since then. So what do you think of go-karting as a practice, as a uh, cross-training event? I think go-karting is is a good practice only because it's it's lower key. Like, I mean, it's, I, I feel like you can take more risk. Yeah. With um, just like Perfect. learning corners and stuff. So, yeah. Everything's so much faster. I mean, it's like going to the skid pad without any. It's like going to the skid pad almost. Yeah, it can be. Mm-hmm. What about you, Miss Vicky? You're you're a go kart aficionado. You've been there many no, many I'm times. Not. <laughs> I am so not an aficionado. Whatever. It sounded um, good though. Yeah. What are you thinking? You know, go kart. I, I could take it or leave it. You get sick. Yeah, it's not my thing. It's just. Um, it, it, you just take such a beating on them, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would just, yeah. I, I mean, I could take it or leave it. What about the time we went out there when we were, we visited a friend over at the uh, the one in Poughkeepsie? Do you remember? Yeah, I mean that was fun. Um, I mean that was fun. I mean we have a tendency to get a little competitive. What are you saying? I do yeah. not. Bill's not yeah. competitive. That's right. As long Aww. as I'm first, it's fine. Yeah. As long as he's first. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know, Jen. You can't really say too much because Jacob was quite perturbed that I was beating him on that uh, his first ever time in a go-kart. And he's like, I'm He was perturbed out. when Mia was beating him. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's He's got a little bit of a competitive streak in him. He does. It was funny because it was it was a really tight track and a, it was a decent sized track, but it was a really tight track. And he's like, "You can't be passing me because my foot is on the floor the entire way." And I'm like, "There is no way your foot is flat on the floor because you just can't go around the track that fast. It's impossible." So it was funny. It was a good time. So go karting. What do you think applies to go karting that applies to being on track, Miss Vicky? Anything? Something, the apexes, everything. the apexes, yeah. a little, mm-hmm. yeah, they can be a little different, but yeah, you get to mm-hmm. try different lines. Yeah, there's okay. definitely lines, um, but at the same time, I think that you see. I don't know about the drift. Do you drift a little bit in go karting or not? Because I was, and uh, not intentionally. <laughs> well, sometimes the tracks are pretty slick and, yeah you know you can't help it but the, the big thing is you don't want your engine to lose too much of the uh the rpm or else your engine bogs down and then it takes forever to mm-hmm. get back i would say apexing in there is about apexing? yeah what about you miss jen anything anything from your go-karting applying to your track driving yet or is it just a little more seat time a little different it's just different hmm well, since Ben was pulled away for unexpected, we'll just pause here for a moment. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to NPR. <laughs> We're here tonight with two guests. Say hi, Vicky. Hi. Say hi, Jen. Hello. So we're here discussing our uh, favorite recipes for uh, chocolate balls. So, uh, Miss Vicky, uh, when you're making chocolate balls, what are your, what are your favorite recipes for chocolate balls? Cocoa. Cocoa. Lots, Lots of cocoa. Of cocoa. Lots cocoa. of cocoa. 
are you cuckoo for cocoa puffs? I'm cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Oh, I like nice. co- cocoa puffs. Oh. I like a good cocoa puff. I haven't had a cocoa puff in a while. Okay, Miss Jen, when you're making your chocolate balls, <laughs> do you have do you have any do you have any secrets that you'd like to share with the audience? Sugar baby. Sugar baby. Lots of sugar. Lots of cocoa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Miss Jen, while we're wasting time and our audience's time, who knows if this is going to make it into the episode? This people. So. Um, when you're making your cakes, what what tips do you have for your cake decorating? Because no one knows this as about you. This is the what don't they know about Miss Jennifer? Um, my tip for sculptural cake making: freeze the cake. Freeze the cake. Freeze the cake. Bake the cake and freeze the cake. It makes it easier to frost. So you're 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 talking about the layer in between you freeze for, or just the outer layers? Both. Both. You're a double freeze. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, just the the cake part. So then you you pull it out and then you layer it and then do your frost. So you get rid of the crumbs. Yeah. Mm. It 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 cuts down on the crumbs, but you you also do a crumb frosting. So you want you actually frost your cake twice if you're doing a crumb layer. A, yeah. Like, yeah, so if you have like a chocolate cake and you have vanilla icing, mm-hmm. so you'll freeze your cake and then you'll layer it with mm-hmm. the frosting in between the layers. And then you will frost it and you call it a crumb frosting. Mm-hmm. And then you let that set so it gets like a little crusty on the outside and then you frost it again. And then you get no crumbs in your frosting. That works quite well. So what if you were to make something that's a little more a little more artsy, a little more fancy, like the uh, pictures that'll be on this episode of some of your prior cake. Uh, <laughs> what, what if you were going to go with something something with the uh, more artistic, more than just a, so uh, I a, don't a scooping like, coat? I don't care for, for fondant, the taste of fondant very much, and, mm-hmm. and it's beautiful. And um, I think... It, it makes just gorgeous cakes, but it really doesn't taste very good. It's not very good. So I try to do um, buttercream frosting mm-hmm. with lots of fondant accents. So nope. if you'll notice, most of my cakes are buttercream frosting, mm-hmm. but with fondant accents. Mm. Fondant accents. You know what one of my favorites is? Mm-hmm. Is a nice buttercream with little... Uh, crushed up oreo in it mm-hmm. like an oreo butter filling it's quite yeah. yummy no no not the filling the the cookie the cookie oh okay yeah. so i put a little bit in there kind of looks like a dirty buttercream so miss vicky you're often uh you're often decorating with jen when you two get together and spend endless 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 hours uh cake decorating so what what are you what's some of the tips that you do that you like to do with Miss Jen? We've had a lot of fun decorating some cakes together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually has alcohol involved. <laughs> well, that's, we didn't say we were building any cake and towers. Late, late nights. Late, late nights, lots of alcohol. Yeah, a couple couple glasses of wine. Yeah. Maybe. And, and then but we we've just had start... some spectacular results. <laughs> we did. We did. We had some pretty awesome results. Any, any cake tips? Patience, patience, for sure. mm-hmm. patience. Okay. Right. You know, you can do a lot with a rice krispie treat. That's going to be the other one. You yeah, can do a lot yeah. With the rice krispie yeah. treat. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, Ben. Do you have any cake decorating tips while we're here? <laughs> Take that as a no. Ben. <laughs> All right. So, are we going to bring a cake to pit race while we're while we're still doing? Perhaps I don't know how to get a cake there without you got to keep it chilled and oh, yeah. hmm. I'll figure something out. Uh oh, double Dawson, single Dawson. Which Dawson are we casting? Dawson, Dawson, Dawson. Hey, he's back. Sorry, no worries. We've we've been uh, we've been wasting time with stupid discussions of cake decorating while you were gone. <laughs> Have you ever had a Coca-Cola cake? No. 
I have no idea how you make it, but my grandma used to make this Coca Cola cake that was fantastic, like with a chocolate spread on top. Ooh. We need to know that. We'll figure it out. Well, I have to. I'll have to, I'll have to be my first thing I bring to one of your events. I have to make sure I show up with a Coca Cola cake. That would be that would be great. So Ben, you're the uh, resident go carter of the four of us. What much much more serious about carting? So <laughs> the, the question that we had was, what parts of carting apply to to normal car racing, and what parts don't? Because the geometry and the physics are very different. Yeah, it's true. A, a car is a real short wheelbase vehicle that doesn't really relate very much. And it's a, it's a vehicle that's built to race, you know, from the ground up versus uh, production based vehicles that we typically drive. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And then the, um, uh, the engine bog thing is uh, something we don't usually have to keep track of either. The what? When, you know how in a cart, when the engine gets low on revs, it kind of bogs oh, out. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's something that I think is a little more endemic to like uh, kind of consumer um, uh, traction kind of carts more than, than when I, when I was racing uh, on an oval oval track, we would, you know, change, change gear three or four times during the day just to keep their RPM range within, you know, within mm-hmm. a couple thousand, like really close. You were, you were always pretty wound out even coming out of the corner. So um, that, 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 that's one thing that did, that's not really, you know, that does, doesn't relate as far as, uh, shifting gears and that sort of thing we shift gears all the time in cars but with most carts unless you happen to be racing a shifter car which most of us aren't or even you know never will get a chance to try to um you know you're driving a direct drive car that's got one gear and like like you said a lot of times it's important to try to keep it up on the revs but um for the real more niche stuff like oval track you're, you're likely to already be pretty dialed in on, on where you want to be with, with the revs you know that you run into gear that puts you exactly where you want to be at the end of the straightaway and hopefully losing you know, as little as possible in the corners. Right. So, so the braking in the carts that I've driven has always been rear wheel braking in carts. Mm-hmm. Is that, okay. is that what you guys were using? Uh, we, we had one brake. I think I had a brake on the left rear, like one brake disc caliper. The other three wheels didn't have any. Uh, and that was just to help you kind of pull in the pits. But yeah, we, I never touched them. We pretty much ran the track almost flat out with like a little burp at the end of the straightaway. And it's like oh, a little okay. blip to help. The, we just did like a tiny blip to help the car accept the rotation, help the car accept the rotation down to the apex. But I mean, for the most part, you were almost flat out the whole time. Okay. So you were doing, this was circle track. Was it dirt? Yeah, we, or this is, this is a, both? I was racing on a, on a uh, dirt oval. Okay. Um, it, was, it was hard clay. So we ran slicks and it was almost like, it was almost like asphalt, except for when it broke away. You know, instead of like asphalt, it broke away. You didn't break a bunch of stuff. <laughs> it broke away. You slid into the hay bales instead of sliding into the wall. So I don't know. About very it. similar kind, of, similar kind of surface as you would find pretty close to pretty close to asphalt. But um, that it was a, it was a circle track, so you're pretty much just running the oval flat out for the most part. With like a little like a just slam the gas back down. I don't know about Jennifer and Vicky, but I need to go do this. This sounds like fun. It, it was a blast. I, I guarantee you, if I wasn't doing anything with road course in cars, I would be racing a car on a dirt track, like oval. And I, 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 sometimes I'm mad at myself that that's not what I do. Hmm. Can, yes. can they, can you rent these things? Uh, shoot. You know I mean? In the world of road course racing, there's plenty of cars for rent. So I'm sure there are circle track cars for rent too. Mm, it sounds like I would a post COVID. <laughs> It sounds like a post-COVID uh, <laughs> dominated with Dawson live. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I would I would give parts of my body to go race on an oval tracking game with the car, and it was so much fun with carts. And it was full contact all the time. Like if you were the person who drew pole for the the heat race, that it would have, that it would qualify everybody. If you drew drew the pole, you would sit there and you wouldn't have to touch the gas. Like everybody else would would just be bumping you on the on the bumper, so you wouldn't touch the gas. <laughs> they would taste lab, they would just push you around until the green dropped and everybody would hit the gas. It was crazy. And you never made a pass without touching somebody. You always touch somebody. You made a pass. You say, "Hey, how's it going?" Psh, keep moving. Hmm. That yeah, made me very comfortable everywhere. watching something like that on television. Just all the bumping. That makes you uncomfortable or comfortable? Uncomfortable. <laughs> she was, was crazy. Watching. It was just a normal thing. It was just every day. <laughs> she was watching her first Spec Miata race, mm. and she was not com- she was not uh, familiar with the concept of bump drafting. So. Oh, it's so good! It's so good when it, when it hits your but back. Does that damage your car? Time. Nah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a it's a race car, and it's nah, only it a bump. Matter. Yeah, it's so good when you get that extra ten horsepower. You're like, thank you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not at the wrong moment, right? 
Right, exactly. It could be a bad moment, but usually, usually, if somebody hits you, that you know, if you're lined up, everything works. Somebody gets you in the middle of the straightaway, you're like, yes, I will take that. Yes, we need to go do some spec me out of too. All right, we got some yeah. stuff to do here. All right, yeah, carding spec me out of that. But I think, uh, I mean, I, I can't point out a million differences in correlations between uh, cars and carding, but that's carding is what got me started and wanting to compete, and it's also something that helped me understand. Uh, how to trust uh, race tires that we're going to, you know, tires that we're going to carry me all the, way, all the way through the corner. So for me, it just happened to, happened to be my introduction into what will and what won't work um, on a race tire and just the idea of competing and getting after it. So if you too want to have your own segment on a podcast, you need to start carding now. Yes. Begin carding now very competitively and do it. <laughs> spend, spend all night, every night treating your tires and getting super obsessed with it. And then realize none of it matters and then start racing cars. <laughs> Waste all the monies. Yeah. I wasted more money than I had to my name. So don't do that, but have fun. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.
Almost ready. It's all right. I don't have a headset. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, we can hear you. Um, Yay. If you had head earbuds, they would keep you from echoing. But you don't have to. I have Bose, but they to be plugging in. Hold on. It just, uh, it just, the problem is when, when one of us talks, Excuse me, one of us talks and you talk at the same time, it'll, it'll clip you. How's that better? That is better. Yay, my headphones. Awesome, awesome. Um, let me check on the girls. Uh, they're both here, so I'm going to walk into the other room and figure out what they're doing, and then we should be good to go. As soon as I plug in my accoutrements. <laughs> Who is Dawson? How did you find him? Is somebody we met when we did the race bar uh, podcast a long time ago. He's great. And he just seemed like a, a cool guy, and we started talking to him. And it made. He's really good. Yeah, yeah. He's been doing this a little bit. Let me let me see where the girls are. They're in the other room. We're we're theming up. Oh, there's one. Hi, Ricky. Is Jen coming? Hold on. Let me get our speakers. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Um, hold on. Yes? No. Yes? No. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Trust me, I can always hear Vicky. <laughs> always. Trying again. I usually have headphones. So just change the speaker. I might have to go do IT on their side. I'm what trying to get the sound that? through the computer. Got it. And I it's working fine don't on see it. Hold on. <sighs> Hold on. I'll be right back. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, that was fun. Let's talk about Vicky while she's gone. <laughs> she doesn't How listen. Is, did Jen get sick because she rode with somebody? Is that no, why she got? No, sick? she gets sick on that. For some reason, the only track she's ever gotten sick on it happened at that same track twice now. The little autocross cars. I think she doesn't look far enough ahead. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the up and down the hills. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. They should be in. Soon. I don't typically get sick. I did at Audra's car, so it's the only yeah, time usually, I've gotten sick. Usually passenging is harder, but she was driving, so that doesn't really seem to make sense. <sighs> yeah, with the autocross, I'll get sick after a few runs. With you driving? No, 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 no. Being oh. a passenger. We were using yeah. computer audio. Are you good? But I have no computer audio. Yes, you do. Are you good? Can you hear me? Think you can help me out, honey? I'm no, the IT her. guy. <laughs> I can get my computer. Well, then we're going to have reverb. We did. It's coming. Sorry, Elizabeth. <laughs> I listened to your podcast. You called me a lady. I was like, wow, I'm a lady now. Oh, wait a minute. I found something. I found it. Hold on. Oh. There we go. I got it. I'm good. I'm good. Can you hear me? <laughs> you can hear me? Yes. It's so good to see you again. I know you're echoey, but that's okay. Or maybe I'm echoey. No, am I echoing? Is there you're an echo? Delayed. So I see your lips moving. 
How's the sound, Bill? It sounds okay. You're going to have to be careful because you you have um, no headphones, so you're going to clip a little bit. So what? You're going to clip a little bit if you come in early because your speaker, okay. your computer speaker is is projecting Makeup. and. You've got your yeah, computer. It's not very loud. The computer's not, the speaker's on the like computer. Watching them. Okay. Mm -hmm. The better thing to do would be to put in headphones and share. Your Go help her out. <laughs> it's like watching a foreign movie dubbed. Do um, you want a pair of earbuds? Yeah, but Jennifer's here. You, oh, well, I guess. One on each ear. You don't need to hear us in stereo. I don't have those kind of earbuds. What do you mean you don't you have, have those? an extra pair of earbuds that we could use? Yeah, I've got tons of earbuds. Okay, why don't you, we do that? They okay. come with the phone. Yeah, it's not that tricky. Okay. <laughs> I'm here for IT only. Hi, <laughs> Enzo. This is what happens when you get the Wilson sisters in one room. 200 podcasts. Oh, they're sisters. Oh, yeah. I was wondering. Yep. The Wilson sisters, just like Hart. Let's see if we can. You're echoing. Maybe it's me. I have to adjust it. I have to. Not getting I'm echo. still going through the computer. Hold on. I usually have headphones, and Jennifer's usually at her house. If Jen puts it in the other ear, you'd be better. Okay, hold on. Can you guys hear us or no? Hold on, just a sec. I mean, you don't listen to me, so it's not a big deal. That's better. You're echoing to me. That's a speaker. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Can you guys hear? I think. Can I don't you think, hear me? Yeah, we Is can hear echoing? you. No. No, we're we're not echoing. Yeah. Bill's not echoing. Is Bill echoing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're echoing <laughs> on my end. <laughs> Well, what we have is yeah, so good, get you get it. to hear it twice. Oh, yeah. It was working. You know, before. Elizabeth, why don't you hop out and hop back in? Yeah, maybe that'll that'll do it. Just just log out and log back in. Okay. See if, see if that works. Sometimes it clears things okay. up. Get out of the house. <laughs> the house said leave. So just leave i used to do that at work but on the speaker. get out of the house you did that at the walkie talkies school is haunted what did they say they laugh get out of the house i don't know who it is yeah it was like the, the walkie talkies at like the custodian better in the better for oh, us yes okay yeah. yay all right. Very well. Okay. You're going to have to dive in on your mic. Who, okay. me? Just, no, not you. Oh, Jennifer. You guys know it is not. That is not the mic. It's the thing that Vicky ignores right in front of her. Okay. All right, Elizabeth. I, I, do, I, do, I do have to tell you one thing. Sure. So yes. you, kept talking, you, kept ta you kept talking about your Toyota 86. And I don't know if this ever happens to you, but when somebody says a word that you don't comprehend, you kind of, it just goes over your head. I didn't know there was a Toyota 86 is actually the name of the car. Yep. Right. So you kept saying Toyota 86 and I'm going, it doesn't look like an 86. I'm like, no, it's, what it's, is it's that much car? Newer. <laughs> it's, an, it's an 86. I know. I went home and researched it. I was like, oh my God, he must think I'm such a flake. Nope. No, because we but thought the same I, thing. He kept he. I must have asked him, Vicky, like five times. That's okay. Like, what kind of car is that? And he kept saying Toyota eighty six. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm so you, sorry. You kept waiting for the other team score, right? Well, how many did GM get? <laughs> so, no worries. It's all good. It's it's I, uh, three cars. Yeah, with it was three a great names. car. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Very well. Yeah, it was um, great, but I kept asking you, and you 
<laughs> Trust me, I'm used to Vicky not listening, so it's not that different. For me, it's so. my ADD. It's like it's selective. Oh, yeah, it's that. selective. I know. Trust me, I'm the selective. <laughs> So I, I don't know if you've ever done a podcast before, but if we can help yeah. you, just let us know. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you know, don't, don't don't feel nervous. It's okay. It's always fun. I'm not somebody. really good at him. That's okay, <laughs> which is really. why I'm not on it. <laughs> we we have done uh, close to 200 of these bad boys, and I don't think we're good at it yet either. So don't worry. Anyway, all right the uh, the theming queens. Are you guys good to go? We are. All right. Very well. Miss Elizabeth, to good to go. Close to the mic when we talk. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> are we going to start talking about the NPR again, like the last time, Jen, or no? The, the what? NPR. Remember NPR? We, we started NPR. talking about the uh, the chocolate balls. I don't remember that. Okay. Very well. I'm the only one who listens to the podcast. While we do it. You were talking about chocolate I balls. I did. Yes, we we made jokes about the Saturday Night Live NPR radio. Oh uh, yeah, sweaty balls. Yes, well, we we did chocolate balls. Sweaty balls. Yes, sweaty balls. Yeah. Shreddy balls. That right. is the funniest clip with Alec Baldwin. Yep. Yeah. How he did that without laughing, I don't know. He is so funny. He's a professional Anyways. trained actor, and we are an amateur, <laughs> non-trained driver, which makes no sense, <laughs> but that's okay. I know. Um, we came okay. up with something for you as a segment, if you are uh, open to it. We were thinking that you and Vicky uh, could talk about um, how you basically learned to do your mechanical stuff uh, yeah. on your own. Because Yeah, absolutely. Because a lot of people won't do this because they think they're not mechanically Dude. inclined. And our whole team's not mechanically inclined. So, you know, we just wing it. Yeah, we wing it. That's kind of what I did. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Is Miss Jen answering your phone? It's her phone. Oh, it's her phone. Okay. Very well. Is it okay. Jim? Is it Jim? It is. It's Jim. Tell him his plushies <laughs> on You know the way. what? We're making a plushie for Jim. He doesn't know it yet. Oh, I We're making a Jim plushie. plushie. I'll show you. I'll show you. A little the stuffed plushie. animal. Hold on. Oh. I'll show you the plushie. Hold on. So we were, we were, Bill wants a mascot for our team. I do. So one of them that came across looked like yeah. her husband. Yep. Right. <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, it looks like Jim. So um, we were messing with Jim saying, Oh, we're going to have a mascot. You're going to be our mascot. So he's like, Oh, no, <laughs> really. But we kind of moved on from there, but we still have it. So we're going to turn it into a plushie. <laughs> that's not it that's not it that's no, it, but that's that's it. Okay. oh that's great that's really great <laughs> i like, like your new we moved, logo we moved on from it and he's like what do you mean we're not going to go with that one <laughs> this, this isn't the one we chose for final but it, we're just yeah. gonna make one plushie out of it just to mess with jim yeah I like the final. It's very good. I, I like that we're gonna, one. We're going to get the fake tires for him to carry around. That's right. Oh. <laughs> and he's going to have to dress like this at one of the races. It'll be fantastic. Oh, my gosh. That will be funny. <laughs> the, th the scat part is he just needs the little uh, wrestling belt and the sunglasses. Everything else he's got. Yeah. It's pretty much Jim. <laughs> yeah. It is. That is great. <laughs> All righty. So yeah. that's that. Good. That is great. Fantastic. We're just having fun I'm, with it. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, you have to. Yep. I listened to a lot today. I was on the road a lot, and I listened to a bunch of your pods, um, a, lo a lot of them with Dawson, and he's great. Dawson's he's good. Great. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah. But I we didn't realize. Dawson on with her. <laughs> he was really great. It was fun <laughs> listening to him because we are all in slow cars, and uh -huh. uh, Everything he was saying is what you learn. You know, the line is not the line for every car. No. I mean, it's kind of a guide, really. But no, that's that's one of the things we like about the the one HPD group we go to. Um, they're they're not disciples of the line. They're disciples which, of the speed. And which uh, one is that? Uh, it's NASA, but it's the Great yeah. Lakes region. Oh right, I love those guys. Yeah, so, I mean, I know the spec guys. 
Yeah. So They're we go so out there. Good. Like we've been to yeah. all of them, uh, East coast wise well, and if great lakes is the best one. Well, yeah, <laughs> but so, the I, North, the great lakes is the best one that we've come across. Yeah. I, um, first, talked with Dan Pina, who's in charge of the Great Lakes, and then um, Tara Brewster is another racer with the spec 944s. Oh, okay. So I, I know all those guys. Yeah. And we have, there's a spec 944 racer um, group, which they're all very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and they help you out. And now I learn that the questions I was asking, the answers I was getting, I understand the answers I was getting because I wasn't clear about my questions and mm-hmm. now that i've learned what that part does and how to replace that part my questions were silly, <laughs> like, <laughs> silly. but you gotta you gotta learn i mean there are no stupid questions just stupid people <laughs> it was like asking bill gates how to open a savings account so you know the que- the answers i was getting were way over my head <laughs> So I needed, you know, back to basics, but they don't remember the basics. So, you know, that's really what relevant. Dawson's good with. Like, because we, we ask like anything. Bill's, Bill yeah. has a whole sheet of just everything that he comes across. 26 pages of dumb questions. Yeah. I like but, when he asked you what's threshold breaking. And both of you, um, Vicky and Jen, you answered like you were in like school. Like the way you answered, <laughs> you're like... Um, what's the definition? Like, quick, look it up. You know, it was very <laughs> hard. Jen's first response is, I hate this question. I know. I know. But it was funny. You were trying to answer like you were taking a test. <laughs> it was very funny. Sometimes I would really feel like Bill makes us feel like we're taking a test. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. You know, hey questions now. like that. I'm right that's, here. Hello. You no, know, that's that's exactly how you answered, like. Is this right? Like, I'm not sure. Right? Yeah, oh. sometimes Bill catches us off guard because he doesn't tell us who he's asking. That's right. <laughs> we're yeah. just like, uh, we're like a deer in headlights with some of the questions sometimes. <laughs> it was edit. very funny. I was cracking up. <laughs> I edit most of them out, except sometimes you guys talk over each other so much I can't edit them out. So then you end up, I don't care. <laughs> it's, 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 if, if it takes me more than five minutes to edit like a 15 second clip, it's going in. Well, yeah, it was funny because the I think Vicky, you answered first, and then Je- and then you asked Jen or vice I- versa, and it was like you weren't the second person who ever did answered. It was like it was a question out of the I air, was thinking <laughs> that, right? And well, sometimes it answered like when you break. <laughs> <laughs> and the, yeah, <laughs> is yeah. and, and you're hoping that's the right one. <laughs> We gave up, like, trying not to sound like idiots sometimes. Because One of, one of my personal favorites is the first question of every podcast is who you are and could you give a brief introduction? And then we go to the second question. And then Vicky says, hey, you know what I think we should do? I think we should say who you are and give some background <laughs> about, you know, what you do. And, and, and I I'm like, I can't even listen to him. I don't yeah. even want to listen to myself. <laughs> And I'm like, that's great. If you just rewind about two minutes, you'll hear the exact same thing that you just asked. But anyway. I'm like, did I yeah. miss something? Yeah. So. Yeah, you did. I should keep going yeah, on a short vacation inside it, your it, head. Yeah, it must it, it could be just how tired it was at the moment. Yep. Yeah, when she's tired, we're in trouble. And she's yeah. tired tonight, so I'm warning you now. Uh, we, we, we've been busting it these last two days, and we still have two more days. But we're on schedule. We are on schedule. <laughs> Well, I do have to say that you, um, um, Bill, you told me about the wearing the Hans device. You said, well, if your neck's strong enough, you'll be fine. Then I didn't wear it. The yeah. next day, I could barely lift my head off the you pillow. You did that too. <laughs> I did that too. Was that, was that from the, uh, the skid okay. pad? Probably just from the whole day. I haven't been yeah. really on track in two seasons. So I was out of shape. <laughs> right. Uh, that happened to me when I was at an HPDE and I was a passenger and he was just oh. racing around that track. And, and I tell you, my, my neck was so sore. Oh, I could barely move it the next day. I was like, Oh my gosh, yeah. Bill, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is the, the Hans device that you have doesn't really work with a three point belt. You know, yeah, it, 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 
it doesn't have the two harness belts going over the top. So it's, it was only going to be limited useful anyway. So. No, I have a six point harness. Oh yeah, that's right. You did it. Simple yeah. As possible. That's yeah. right. That would be simple. Well, All right, Miss Vicky, you good to go? Yes. We're good okay. to go. All right, very well. Oh, and one other thing when I was listening, I'm sorry. I'm, no I'm, talk- I'm going to be talking. When it's I was fine. listening it's- about the seat insert, because I had trouble with that. I uh-huh. I have trouble with seating. That's one of the issues with the 944. Right. Um, they do, if you look up HMS or just go online, yeah. that seat insert looks looks good, you know, that they yeah. pour this stuff around you. Mm-hmm. For me, it's height, and I don't think the seat insert will help me with height. We can help you with height. We know how to do that. Yeah, I, I have that pillow that I wore. I I used in your <laughs> Toyota eighty six. I saw that. I saw that. I was yeah. like, wow. Okay. That actually that seat if that's got two handles on the left hand side, and it'll crank up, and you can go bloop 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 bloop. bloop. Yeah. I don't know I, if it'll be enough, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, yeah. you remember okay. this is your podcast, Miss Elizabeth. You can say anything you want. You can talk as long as you want. Vicky will talk right over you. Don't. I will. I'm bulldozer. That's right. I That's will, good. and I apologize right now. That's right. No, I but, like that. But she won't stop it. That reminds me. I need a. I need a notepad so I don't bulldoze. Hold on. Go ahead. Very well. See, I just bulldozed. Do you see I that? Know. I just yeah. bulldozed. <laughs> yeah. It was we, good though. <laughs> we're well aware. So, so Vicky and I have this problem. Like we go to the hangar, and I've already got everything planned out in my head. And Vicky's in her distracted cluster tornado that we call it. So we end up, if, if we can make it through the first five minutes without arguing, it's fantastic. The rest of the time is great. It's the first five minutes where you have the clash of styles. So yeah. when she gets angry with me and she says nothing is wrong, but yet you can tell that she's mad at me. We have like code words, like one, when we're going to get into an argument, it's like pop tarts and you just say pop tarts out of nowhere. <laughs> So now I came up with a way to talk to her at the hangar whenever she's angry with me and she starts showing it, but she's really not angry with me, but she's, but she's saying stuff that makes me know that she's angry. I just walk up to her and I look her in the eyes and I said, you're so sexy. And so far it's worked. Yeah. Well, that's great. When we get to the hangar and we start to argue for the first five minutes and I just notice that you're mad at me and you don't think you're mad at me, but you're still yelling at me and i just walked up to you and go you are so sexy yes that does work yes so the other thing is too <laughs> is that we need to have a scapegoat so our scapegoat's name is rick, rick. so you know well, mark, the tools out. it's rick's fault mark it's rick's and i fault. don't ar- mark and i don't argue but he tries to keep me on track because i there's so much going on i have the race car the 944 i'm working on another one and I'll be doing something. And he's like, what are you doing? Um, um, nothing. I'm working. I'm taking out some parts on the 944. He's like, all righty. Why don't we steer you over here? Back to what you were doing. <laughs> no, Let's she's get- like Alan. She's like Alan. <laughs> uh, listen, listen, she's like you. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. Well, it must be I terrible. do it. Uh, it must be terrible just like trying to clean a house too, because <laughs> from point A to point B, I can I can I can work my butt off the entire day and not accomplish anything. No. Or, well, and then I I get tired of doing electrical work, and I just want to paint something. Mm-hmm. So like I pulled the brakes so I could paint the calipers. <laughs> like that was. My- <laughs> and he's okay. like, what What are you doing? The car is ready to put on the road. Well, I'm redoing the front suspension. He's like what are you doing? <laughs> Let's yeah. just drive the car first. <laughs> hey. oh, there you go. Uh, Liam's berating our truck key. Go for it. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. We always edit. All right. Are we ready to start again for the fourth time? We're ready. We're ready. Okay. 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 You're going to get something to drink now, Vic? Go to go to the bathroom, anything? No, we're good. Okay. Very well. Oh, this is going to be one of those podcasts. I can see it coming yeah, out. Two ADD girls. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Jen, punch her. Jen's, when she, Jen's sleeping. When she, <laughs> no, she, she's looking at braids right now for the. Ah. Ah. 
no giving away hints. No, 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 no. It's for your costume? No, it's for the theming. But you're not allowed to Vicky blowing it while we're almost live. Okay, very well. This whole theme thing will be blown out of the water by the time this podcast is over. I won't tell anyone. Vicky's too excited. Very well.